Sarah asked if I could write a blog about our experience, I suppose as a couple, uh, about uh, ME and its impact on um, self as a husband or partner. And instead of doing that, I thought I'd just try and do this uh, video log um, after a day of teaching and a little bit of reflection. It's probably quite a good way of, uh, of bringing it to life. Um, so I suppose if I'm asked uh, how, how I, I feel about the whole thing, I suppose it's um, sort of summed up in the um, word frustration. Uh, that probably covers most of the aspects so from Sarah's point of view. I really feel that sense of frustration, that the whole thing about ME, about it not being really fully understood, um, both uh, from her own point of view on why, um, but also from the medical point of view. Sarah's blogs and started to understand how frustrating that is. It's the frustration of the condition as, as, as people know, just trying to understand what it is. If there was any time scale to any recovery, um, Sarah has recovered before to a certain extent so there's always some hope with that but it's the frustration of just not knowing. I can imagine for many others who've been suffering for a long time and haven't seen signs of recovery it's probably even frustration would be too, too mild a word really. Um, it's probably even worse than that. So really for us it's frustration about uh, experience of the medical profession and dealing with it. And I suppose from my point of view that's um, a frustration that's shared. It's very difficult because I'm not the one suffering here really. I have a fairly reasonable normal life, still play my rugby, still do uh, keep fit. Um, so for me life really carries on and I think that makes it even more frustrating because as a couple we were quite active. We would do uh, tennis and um, do classes at uh, the gym together. Sarah would go off and do hers and so we shared a fairly active um, lifestyle together and I suppose the frustration for me is that we can no longer do that. Not only uh, day by day is that not possible but just even trying to plan ahead. We gave up our tennis membership because we part of our lifestyle was to go on to play tennis together um, and that, that disappeared because just obviously can't plan for that sort of thing. Um, and I suppose in terms of day-to-day -day activity, just going out, um, trying to do things with people, uh, family and friends. The inability to, to plan ahead, just to say yes, oh yes, we'll be there, we'll come to something, we'll do a, a family do. Just knowing really that um, Ty, Sarah will get, uh, or probably will be, really too tired to do it, um, and then exhausted and fatigued. And, and I suppose that's part of the other problem, is are the people not really understanding what it is? So just to say, you're a bit too tired to come out, it doesn't explain anywhere near the level of fatigue that Sarah's feeling before that, or even sometimes if we do manage to plan to go out and get out, uh, we're always the first to leave because, um, you know, clearly Sarah can't take that, even if she's rested to try and make a the success of a day or an evening, um, we have to go because she just can't physically deal or cope with it. Um, so that is frustrating, that sort of so-called normal life, family life, um, the normal pattern of what we do, we're fairly active, as I say, physically as a, uh, for physical activity, but also socially if we'd like to be. And that just um, goes by the wayside. And of course, as people know, the more you get outside of those circles, the less invites you get. And it's, it's a vicious circle, so we don't cut ourselves off, but you can see the danger of that uh, happening. There's just, I have the same frustration as Sarah does about not understanding the condition and its impacts, uh, and particularly medical profession not really understanding what it is. I really wish more people did, did know. Um, it's certainly better now than it was when Sarah first suffered in the sort of 1990s when obviously it was referred to as yuppie flu and chronic fatigue syndrome. There's a bit more understanding and most people seem to know somebody, a friend who suffers from it, so there's a little bit more sympathy, but it's certainly not uh, uh, widespread and that, that can be quite frustrating as well. And also you don't want to sound like a broken record trying to explain every time. So quite often people don't really know um, that Sarah is suffering from ME, so people who know, haven't probably seen her for a time, don't know why. And again, that's the frustration um, for Sarah in particular, I think, just trying to explain what it is um, and then take it, taking that away and uh, really not wanting to sound too whingy, even though it is really something that is worth really talking about. Uh, and that's also difficult as well, as I, this is difficult to say, but Sarah feels that sometimes, is that it becomes the only thing that can be that's talked about. That's why it's been really helpful for her, I think, to, to have a job and to be mixing with other people, just to um, stop the, the bright fog setting in. 
Um, I think working has meant that quite often that brain fog does occur a little bit more often. Um, but I've got a sense of humour, <laughs> the parents do, on that. So when Sarah asks something and she's forgotten two seconds later what uh, my reply was, or I've told her I'm doing something and she asks me again what we're doing, um, I think I've just got used to, <laughs> got used to that and uh, we just have a giggle about it now. Um, but I think overall, yeah, frustration is, is, is what I feel. It impacts on our daily lives, it impacts on what we can do with the children, what we can do together. Um, but as I say, right, I don't want any sympathy for that because I'm not the victim here. My life carries on as almost as normal. Um, so I feel a great guilt, I suppose, in one sense, in that I'm still running around playing rugby and keep going down the gym two or three times a week, keeping really reasonably fit. Uh, and yet it almost seems an you know, adverse relationship to, to Sarah's uh, ability to do that. So I hope that has given a little bit of an insight. Um, It is hard to, to explain because there are, at the moment Sarah feels a little bit better this last week or so but three or four weeks ago we were at a point where it was really really hard and she was um, suffering quite a bit really. The tiredness and the fatigue had really set in so we weren't able to do very much at all and you know even just trying to sit and watch a film in the evening rather than going out and watch a film halfway through you know, get to half eight and she can't really sort of stay awake and, um, and watch it so I suppose that just all those little things build up. Um, but now I suppose I think I do just have a sense of humour with it we sort of try to wake her up through to see the end of the film so it is quite often the case that she thinks she hasn't seen a film it's probably true actually she probably slept her through the, the first time we ever saw it um, we're just really praying that Sarah gets through all of this and at the end um, there is a, a an end to this um, latest bout of the, uh, the ME I know for many people they suffer for a long long time without any hope of that um, but because she has recovered, we do hope that's the, the case here. Um, I do leave Sarah to do the campaigning on this, um, and perhaps sometimes I should do more or take even more interest. It's just that I do tend to do quite a lot of um, issue-based campaigning on a variety of things. And I think it's important that Sarah has this as her own space where she's the, the expert and leading on it. So I'm very proud of what she's uh, been doing on Twitter and joining in some of the ME campaigning. Um, and so congratulations to all of you who are trying to raise the, the subject. And I suppose that's my final frustration, is that having been an MP for 13 years, I don't think I really did enough um, on behalf of um, ME, ME sufferers. Um, there are hundreds of uh, things that MPs have to deal with and you have to pick priorities and choose, so I can't really beat myself up too much about it not being one of my top ones, but in hindsight I don't think there were very many people doing it. Uh, and so Sarah reading this book by, Sir, uh, by Ian Gibson, I'm gonna knight him, Sir Ian Gibson, uh, but Ian Gibson's book, um, clearly there needs to have been more of us helping him through that period to make a difference, and I didn't. Um, so I have a bit of frustration, a bit of regret on not having done that. But hopefully that gives you just a little bit of an insight um, into uh, what we're up against. Uh, I'd like to think those of us who are married or have partners who suffer from ME property, we need to uh, talk to each other and share our experiences. I know how wonderful the ME community is, particularly on um, Twitter and social media, uh, looking after each other because that's a, they can't really, many of them can't really get out, um, and so probably the only way of communicating. And I'd be quite happy to join in anything, and if there is a partners page or there's a, other partners who want to share their experiences, probably would be a good idea to uh, to do that. So thanks for uh, bearing with me. Hopefully it's a bit quicker than reading a, a lengthy blog. Um, but these are my sort of initial thoughts and I might write a few more down on reflection when I've uh, seen this back. I hate doing these if I'm being honest but it's probably a very good way of uh, bringing it to life. So thank you very much for uh, listening and my thoughts are with all ME sufferers um, and their partners and families. Um, we're with you and trying to do all that we can to, to help raise the profile and find a solution to this, uh, this, this, this situation.